Okay. Okay, so the first thing I'm I'm realizing when I see this problem is that this is unlike um, last yesterday, I was gonna say last week. Um, uh, this is like um, not just it, last week it was a charged rod. The, the word they used was charged. But today uh, we have conductors, which is a little bit different. Um, and there are some special properties that make it really easy to work with. Um, the first one, let's start with, get this out of here. This is a book called um, Griffiths. The, the um, let's see, the cover kind of looks like this. It's a really good book for this kind of um, electricity type stuff. Uh, where was I? I think 97. Something like this. Similar problem. Mm -hmm. Okay, here it is. Um, so the two kind of types of metal um, could be an insulator, which is like um, glass or, or air or water. Um, it's, it's something where charge doesn't, um, it doesn't necessarily move very much. Um, so if charges can't move, energy can't really move through the material very well. Um, a conductor, like you, mostly metals um, and uh, a perfect conductor would be, that's what superconductors try to get towards. Um, they try to make it so that it requires almost no energy to, to move charges, which would, it would be like, um, you know, when you turn a light switch on in your house, you actually, like you're, I don't know, burning coal or you're, you're you know, using nuclear energy, whatever we're using, um, because it, it needs energy to push the charges. Um, however, if we had a perfect conductor, we wouldn't need that. Um, so some of the weird properties of conductors are that inside the conductor, so in the metal, there is no electric field. Now let me read this, let me refresh myself because I can't exactly, um, I don't remember why. So let's see, uh, because if there were a field, free charges would move, and it wouldn't be electrostat, that's a stupid, okay, thank God. He said that's hardly, that's hardly a satisfactory. Um, you know, you can't move. Figure 2.14. So if we, this is some external electric field. So imagine that just in space, there's just some electric field going this way. And if we put a conductor into it, the charges, because like imagine if we put a conductor into it, initially just some metal, like my phone or whatever, isn't charged. Like I'm not like, you know, rubbing it on my hair. There's no like static. So it's like there's equal amount of positive and negatives all over the place. But if I put it into an electric field, the positives move where positives want to move. That's that's the direction of the electric field is defined as the way the positives want to move. And the negatives go to the other way. And the reason for this is that they are um, uh, cancel. Uh, OK, so I think that's that's what I'll get to. Um, mm -hmm. The charges pile up on each side of the material. So at the, at the end of the day, there's no charges in the middle and there are charges along the edge, which is what we'll use in our problem over here. Uh, mm -hmm. It is in the opposite direction of the usual, of the external field, E1. And these charges cancel. Charge will continue to flow until the cancellation happens. So until this induced electric field, because at first there was no electric field, um, the induced electric field is in response to this um, uh, external one. We have an internal electric field that cancels out. And so if you drew a whole circle around the whole thing, there is no electric field. Um, so it's kind of um, this, this concept of induced electric field is a little bit confusing because they say right at the, at the start that E is zero inside. Um, but what's really happening is that it's canceling anything outside of it. Um, and as a result of that, 
there is no charge density. So this is a little bit of a new term. Um, we saw yesterday, yesterday uh, from Gauss's law that the flux, so the number of electric field lines that goes through a particular area is equal to the charge enclosed over this epsilon naught thing. Well, we can take this into another form. So this, what we worked with yesterday was called the integral form. And it's usually very easy for solving problems. Um, but when we want to think about like, um, you know, generalities and, and little tricks and stuff, it's, it's actually helpful to um, work, with, work, work with both of them. Um, and so in order to get from the integral form to the differential form, we use something called the divergence theorem. Back. Mm. The divergence theorem is kind of, it's more or less an equivalence between if you integrate the lines, like the electric field lines that go through a particular area, that is equivalent to the derivative. So this is a three dimensional derivative. Like if you were, instead of writing um, uh, dx, uh, if you were to write, um, uh, dx, dy, dz, that would be called the del operator. And it's, it's, it's like, it's just a, it's a normal derivative, um, like d, dx, um, but it's in all three dimensions. Um, this is a crappy, let me just get an image. It's, so it's kind of like this. It, you take a derivative in the x direction, in the y, and the z. The, the divergence, is when you take the dot product with this thingy. So that would be, um, so say this, this is some random vector f and it's pointing in like this direction. It has some x component, it has some y component and a z component. And in order to get the divergence, you would take the um, uh, x derivative in the x component, the y derivative in the y component and the z derivative in the z component. Um, the gradient and the curl are a little bit more complicated and we don't really need them right now. Um, so it turns out that by this thing called the divergence theorem, which is something for math and, and geometry and stuff. Let's see, informal. Oh, it's kind of annoying. Anyway, it tells us that the um, flux of a vector field. So our, our electric field is a vector field and we're integrating it over a surface. That is equal to this thing, the divergence of that field over a volume. So it's kind of a, it's a relationship between things in different dimensions. When you do a surface area integral, that's two dimensions, right? If you do like over the surface area of a sphere or that's kind of hard to uh, imagine. The, the surface area of a square, you have length and you have width. Um, but if you do like a box, you have length, width, and height. So it's, that's volume. So when you take a, um, a derivative, you're taking the um, divergence, I'm sorry. You're doing it over a volume. So a triple integral, x, y, and z versus the surface. So depending on your surface, x, y, or like a circle would be like the radius and the angle. Um, anyway, so that the, the reason that that is an, an important thing to look at is because if the electric field inside the conductor is zero, that means, looking at this, if we take the derivative of zero, that's still zero. So this whole side is zero. And that means rho, which is, rho is just a, um, it's the volume version of Q. So if you remember from here, uh, rho is just the volume version of, of Q. It's like a charge density instead of a charge. And so we have this important quantity that inside the conductor, the charge is zero. And uh, as a direct result of that as well, the net charge resides on the surface, just like we see here. So the electric field is, is pointing outwards all over the, um, the surface and inside is zero. This is actually a much better picture than this one because this is what actually happens. You have you know, some charge going in and the charge, you know, it was initially in here, but now it's all on the edges and it's creating an electric field as if all the charge resides on the surface. Induced charges is what we're working with, uh, with, this, with this problem. 
So for instance, if you have some kind of positive charge over here, this conductor, which is initially just mishmashed, like it's some positive, some negative all over the place, it reacts to this in, uh, charge over here by inducing a charge distribution. So you have negatives on this side and positives on this side. <laughs> Here, we would have a, so this is a cavity similar to this one. So these white spaces are cavities and the charge inside would be, you know, our, our little uh, point charge. So we have a point charge, um, a total charge on this thing and a total charge on this thing. And our job is to figure out how things like this, like how that happens. So I'm just trying to see if there's anything useful before I, we actually start with the problem. Capacitors, they're a little bit further on, similar to an insulator, but not quite, or a conductor, I mean. Okay, let's get rid of that and go over here. So immediately, right off the bat, we can say, um, well, this one is easy because um, we're, we're given that. So this one, this total right here is just negative five uh, microcoulombs. I think they say that you don't actually have to write microcoulombs. Um, yeah, so you could probably just write the number five right there. Um, and then the inner surface, this was, was one that was, uh, for shell one, I'm, I'm kind of, um, certain about it. Um, so actually this whole information right here just goes directly in the total. Um, so that's where that's from. Our job though is to figure out how it distributes itself. But first it's actually easier to solve some of these because if you remember the very first thing we figured out about conductors is that E is zero inside a conductor. So if we look to this question, which asks us, asks us about the electric field in a particular region, we can already look at, let's see. So this is a conductor. So what is region four? Region four is inside a conductor and region two is inside a conductor. These two shells are conductors. So two and four are both zero right off the bat. We already know that there cannot be an electric field inside there. So let me take another picture. So I'm, I'm trying to figure out, I'm, I'm using the fact that um, E is zero inside the conductor and I'm trying to kind of um, figure out where my electric field is and figure out how I can make it so that there is no, um, no electric field. So I'm drawing, I'm drawing this figure again. And I have my, this is a minus five in here. And then I'm thinking, since this ring is a total negative five. Hmm. Actually, let me go over this YouTube video. It was kind of helpful. Um, what is 37? Maybe can I find 36? 37. Mm -hmm. Maybe I'll just type this. Because it looks like his situation is almost identical to ours. Um, oh, that's the, oh, okay. Uh, this is 37, this is course name. Uh, this unforgettable vacation memory, it didn't actually begin here. This memory began when the family booked their summer vacation early on Verbo. Here we're going to look at what we call a spherical conductor. Mm -hmm. Okay. 
Okay, that wasn't very helpful. Let's see. It seems like he started kind of out of nowhere with 10. Where are all these numbers? A charge inside our spherical conductor that has a cavity. So here's our spherical conductor. There's a cavity inside a conductor, and inside the cavity we place a small charge, a minus five microcoulomb charge, while at the same time we place a positive eight microcoulomb charge on the spherical conductor. What is he doing? So there's a cavity here, and then what, another cavity here? What? Oh, such a fat, poor drawing. What is he doing in the left? Electric, no. Um, How many regions does he have? One, two, yeah, that's not what we're, so he's, he only has one cavity and we're, we have two. Um, I'm thinking um, one aspect of, I, I think what I'm, what I'm messing up is that I'm starting from the inside. So I'm starting with my point charge and I'm trying to work outwards, but I think based on this picture, I should be working inwards. Um, I think what ends up happening, let me see if I can find a similar problem in this, in this textbook. I think what ends up happening is that regardless of all this shit in, on the inside, we can just treat this as a negative eight charge. So I think what, what we need to do is this is negative eight uh, on the outside. Actually, yeah, let me try that. Uh, so negative eight on the outside and then Oh, wait, 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 wait. Oh, yes, I didn't read that. I thought that was total. So I'm sorry, that this is not negative eight. It is negative eight on the outside. So negative eight here. Let me pull it up in Excel. You're so old. Come on. There we go. Um, can you hear me? Yeah, I can hear you now. Okay. Hi. Um, so I was just wondering, like, uh, will the inner shell to charge would be the sum of all the charges inside, like the sum of um, all the inner and outer shell one plus um, shell two outer, like negative eight plus negative five. Yeah, that makes sense. So let's see um, if that were, we would have. Two, and plus negative five, I guess, because the point charge is also having another charge. Mm hmm So let's, yeah, let's try that. Let's do negative eight on the outside and then let's, I don't know, maybe do plus 10 on the inside. Plus 10 and then uh, a cavity and then another one, which would be um, negative five on the outside, plus five on the inside, and then negative five on the inside. Maybe, let's see. So why, why would that work? Um, I think in theory that would work. So let's, let's check. Um, if we draw a dashed line in like, so what I'm doing is I have, what I'm, what I'm gonna try for a second is uh, that's nothing. That, I'm sorry. Um, how do I do that? Um, that would be on the inside would be plus five, uh, negative five, uh, inner shell two would be plus 10. So I drew that as a picture. Um, so let's look at the electric field. Would that check out? Um, it, 
it would definitely check out for like uh, inside this this region four, because in that case, there would be a, so then we would draw, actually, then we would draw Gauss's law, right? Because then it would be, um, where is it, where is it, where is it, where is it, here. We would do this one. And we could say, how much charge is enclosed in a, if we were to draw, I wish I could like, instead of doing this rectangular, I wish I could do a circle. So in that area, how much charge is enclosed? Well, based on our, our guess over here, we have negative five in this little dot and then plus five on the inside ring right here. So inside the green ring, there's zero charge enclosed. That means that E is zero. So that checks out. Region four has zero uh, electric field. Let's go one more. So then we would have, um, uh, what is it? So it would be uh, negative five plus five. Hmm. Why did I have negative five on the outside? Hmm. Um, yeah, I don't think this is negative five on the outside. I think it's, um, hmm. I was so certain of that. Why did I think it was negative five right here? I did. Negative eight, and then you were thinking. I don't think it would be plus ten on the on the, this one. I wouldn't. Yeah, it didn't work. Okay, um, because it's getting canceled from the inside one. Okay, so what's what's good so far? This is good. This is good. Um, well, we're given this one, so that's good. Oh, wait, that's why. Um, if, uh, where is it? If Q1 total is negative five, but we already put plus five here, then um, it needs to, it, it needs to total out to um, negative five. So what we can do instead is um, sum of these two, and it needs to be negative five, regardless of what we do. So right now that's not okay, right? This needs to have a total charge of negative five. So let's make this negative ten because we know that that five is correct because it can't it 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 satisfies that requirement of uh, e is zero in region four. Um, you can you please explain how do you get um? the inner surface value for shell one again? Inner surface volume for, oh, so that, I did that only because of um, E is zero inside the conductor. And the reason that, you know, that line of reasoning works is because I need to have, um, when, when I draw this circle right here, I'm, I'm, try, I'm trying to draw a circle. Oh, actually, hold on, I can make it. So way um, line dashed three. Nice. Okay. When I draw this circle, it needs to have E equals zero right there. And the only way I can have that by Gauss's law right here is if Q is zero. If there were a, a charge enclosed, it would mean that the electric field uh, on this dat dotted line would not be zero, but it needs to be based on this. And so the only way to do that is to have the charge on this ring right here on the inner one be exactly equal to the charge on this uh, dot. So I have negative on the dot, and so I'm putting plus five on the dot on the inside surface. And so that's okay. So that applies for every situation. Yes. Like all the uh like whenever there is such a ring and we yep. have to 
Okay. And then the, re the reason I, I was struggling so much with negative 10 was because I wasn't, I, was, I wasn't using what they were giving me. There's more information that I, I keep forgetting about. Uh, I know that at the end of the day, if I just, you know, if, if I erase everything else from the problem and I just have the shell, it has a total charge of negative five. And so I need to make it so that the Q, so if you see, it's kind of small right there. Q total is the inner and the outer. So it's, it's just a, it's a superposition of the charges. So because I put this plus five here, and it's a sum, so I need to add the, the inner and the outer. It's it's necessary that I have a negative ten on the on the outer shell right here, because of um, because of that information that they gave that this is negative five. And so now I have green, green, green. Um, I know this one. That one's given to me. So now let me erase this and see what we're left with. Um, I have negative, five, negative 10 on the outer. Um, that is not there anymore. Um, what can I do? Actually, that was positive 10. And it's for the exact same reason that we did this one. So if at the moment we, oh wait, no, no, no. no. Yeah, it's not, I'm, I'm doing the same thing again. I'm, I'm regarding the, the outer surface as the most important one, but for all intents and purposes, I can just view um, like this whole thing as, uh, let me see, let me do this. That, like, like just forget about everything on the inside. It is a shell of negative five coulombs. So now I can view the problem just like I did with the dot in the middle before. Now, now I just have a giant dot. And so, if I were to draw another one of my um, rings and use the E equals zero thingy, oops, let me put my thing in the, in the ring now. The electric field still needs to be zero here. So um, if I have a dot of negative uh, five and I need this to be zero, then I need the, uh, charge in, on this inside part of the shell to be plus five. This is another five. And remember, I wasn't given this like I thought at the, at, at the beginning. All I know is that the negative eight is on the outside. And so by the exact same way that I did the first one, the shell two total is the sum of those two things, which is just negative three. So at the end of the day, I should have a, I can treat this in almost entire thing as just a ball that is, um, has, oh wait, what could, this is ultimately just a ball that has a charge of negative three coulombs, microcoulombs. So let me know how that works. Does, does that uh, check out that chart we just made? Oh no, it didn't work. Fuck. The inner, the outer shell, inner surface, and the total is wrong again. Let's see. Wait. Uh, so you said the inner surface. Um, five and negative three, shell number two. Yeah, these are both wrong. This one and this one. Yes. Okay. What's going on? Um. Hmm. <laughs> It's actually one of those practice problems he um, gives as a trick question on exam and gives us to practice before it. So it's mm -hmm. kind of hard. Um, well, the only other option is to do what my first instinct was, which was to not treat this thing as a giant ball, but rather to treat it as really just a shell of, um, oops, what did I do? Like this, 
and to treat it like it just has negative 10 um, radiating out from the outside. Um, why is that okay? Uh, if I have negative five here, then I have, let me, I need more drawings. Uh, negative five around that is a plus five. And then I know that. So it will be the same logic. It will be the same logic as point charge and the inner, oh, uh, the outer shell one surface. They have yes. the same value. But yeah. opposite charges. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I guess. I guess so. I guess I'm I'm treating it because that uh, where is it? This negative five canceled the charge of this one. There is no charge anymore. Like there, like the this whole uh, area right here has no charge. And so the reason this outside one that I was just at out here has charge is because of this uh, requirement right here. And then I have charge on the outside. Yes, okay, you're absolutely right. So if I look at this picture um, right here, there is no charge uh, pointing, actually, wait, why did it say that? E does not equal zero. No, that's true, that's true, that's true. Um, but, is there a better picture? Um, concentric spherical. Mm. No, no, kinda. Let's see. Charge uh, inside. Mm. If I use ten, it works. Okay, so I, yeah, I guess instead of treating the whole thing, so I, what I was doing was taking this for more than it was worth. Apparently, all that all that you're supposed to use this for was finding this number. Um, but you're not supposed to treat it as like this total charge here. You're not supposed to treat that in the next step. You're supposed to use this one. Yeah. That's right. And then if we add those together, it is now a two. So is that right as well? So I think uh, the logic about um, the outer surface of shell two canceling the charge on the no, the inner surface of shell two canceling this charge on the outer surface of shell one is um, the concept we are going to apply here, right? Yeah. And that goes for every other subsequent sur uh, surface. Yes. Even if there are three or like two. Yep. Thank you. Yeah, so these need to cancel. And yeah, you're, you're absolutely right. It's, it's, this, it's like a, it's kind of like a, uh, like a staircase logic. This one cancels this one, this one cancels this one. And the, the only reason we knew this was because we were given this. So this was, let me, you know, let me make another color. We were given these ones. Because this, but yeah, because, so because this one needs to cancel this one, we know that. And then since we know that, we can, we know that the requirement is that this plus this equals this. So we figured that one out. And then we did the same thing uh, as this one. So because this one was negative 10, this has to be plus 10. Then we were given this and we add them together to get that. So let's um, see that powder. Okay, and another sharp one. And on the outside is a negative eight, and the inside is a plus ten. So that is a negative ten. Okay. 
Okay, so now, um, like we mentioned before, um, right off the bat, we know that two and four are both zero. So our job is to find one, three, and five. One is this region outside. And I think this is, this is again, this is, I, I was uh, waiting for this because this is, in my mind, what I would do is I would say it's, um, it's two, two micro, or not two microphones, it's, um, well, well, yeah, actually you would just write the number two because it's, um, it's, it, it actually, it takes care of the, the units for you. It just says K and then you would do uh, like whatever, whatever the Q is that's causing, like um, if you remember from last week, the, um, oops. The force had both Qs, Q1 and Q2, but the E field had just the Q, like this. So it's whatever Q is, is creating it. Um, and I'm pretty certain um, it would be the total. So it would be the thing on the outside. Or not, it's, it's weird to think about this, like on the outside. I'm pretty sure it's two for, for region one um, because it's, when you think about it as a total, it's like, it's kind of like the, the, like, um, the filling in thing I kept doing. Like it's, it, now it's a, you know, once you have the total, you can kind of view it as, as a thing. Um, so, I mean, again, the only other, the only option is two uh, or negative eight. Um, I'm fairly certain it's two, but I may have it wrong based on that revelation that you made about the, uh, this one it, being, it's correct it is too yeah because okay. the total like it remains uh, correct like negative five was the total for shell one and yeah so it's total for this one uh, we can still apply that formula of addition okay okay so yeah one is one is two and then what's three three is this area in here i look at that let's see that has uh, the outer is negative 10 and the inner is, well, the inner is positive 10. Um, wouldn't that mean it's zero too? I think it is zero. Um, see, that's what, that's what was confusing me about this picture. Where is it? That, I don't understand why E is a zero in there. Does it say anything? It says E is not zero because, well, yeah, it's canceling the charge. Yeah, E equals zero inside, but why? Let's go back over here. Um, Well, might be better to just go back. Okay. To well. So that means that all the spaces which are outside the shelves, um, like three, five, one, they will be having a specific, uh, specific electric field value that we need to calculate, and the, um, the two and four have zero electric field. Yes, exactly. Yeah, two and four definitely have zero. Um, and I'm a bit confused why. You know, let's just draw. Let's draw Gauss's law. Um, let's draw a Gaussian surface on region one. So we we, we already have that, but let's just check it. Um, so what charge is enclosed in here? We have a a negative eight, uh, a plus ten, a negative ten. 
Oh, this is weird. Um, a plus five and then negative five. What? What's going on? Um, or maybe, maybe we're not supposed to do that, but we're only supposed to be looking at these totals. What about that? I think that, ooh, that might be uh, wise. So if we look at these things and forget about like the induced, all, all those induced things, because all the induced things, they were all to satisfy this requirement uh, that E equals zero inside the conductor. So what about, what if we just forget about that and figure since we have these totals, we can uh, forget about all the like, in, you know, inside the conductor, outside the conductor, and just make the following uh, circles. What would the electric field of this thing be if this was a giant point charge of two microcoulombs? Well, the electric field would just be uh, two. Yeah. Because. Yeah. But it didn't work. Oh, it wasn't two? No, um, it's region one, right? Um, I tried it and it didn't work. So we might need to add stuff. I don't know what we are good. Is it negative eight? Um, I'm gonna try one more time. Yes. Damn it. Okay, it's negative eight. Um, Huh. Okay, so that's the ultimately that's the outer. Yeah, okay. Yeah, yeah. I get it now. <laughs> it's so confusing. It's very confusing. Um, why wouldn't the total matter? Um, Maybe the total is just there so we can figure out like uh, either of the inner or outer surface and that's the whole point of it. Yes. So in that case, so if region one is negative eight, then region three is negative 10 because that has a, a negative 10 on the other side. And then uh, because this is a point charge, it doesn't have an outer, so we can just use negative five. So I think it is um, negative eight in region one, zero in region two, negative 10 in region three, zero in region four, and then negative five in region five. Okay, so it's not that hard. We just have to remember which si uh, which places go, okay. Yeah. So that box, the initial one, it gives us the all the answers. Yes, exactly. Okay. I hope he gives a similar question and doesn't change it much. He it generally doesn't change it too much. Uh, he just gives different numerical values. Right, like the yo-yo. Yeah. For the questions he already gave us for practice, but if there is any like all other questions, he he keeps one question like that, and he says that that's the most trickier one, and the other four are more tricky actually, <laughs> because we have never seen them. Right. Okay, thank you so much. Um, Absolutely. Um, I have a quick question before we end because I was actually confused about it. Um, how do we apply Gauss's law with insulators? And how do, is there any formula and how does it differ for solid and hollow objects? Mm, insulator, 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 insulator. Mm, I don't think I think that's a much harder problem. I don't think insulators are covered until you get to like a topic called like dense matter. Like I, I don't think I know how to do insulators. Let me see. So he mentioned that the volumes of uh, solid objects would not be given and a formula it would either be given or we would need to derive it for hollow structure if we are given a hollow insulator and we have to um, we will get, we will be given a problem about that. And uh, sometimes we have to solve it with charge inside the in charge of the insulator, or sometimes we have to solve it by electric field or 
any useful area of Gaussian surface. That's what he said. It's I think confusing. The whole idea is that insulators, um, for instance, if you were to, um, I mean, if this shell one were an insulator, um, there would be no charge on the outside. So it would be, it would cancel, it would cancel everything on the inside. Um, let's see, maybe I can find another. Um, does it not just shield all the charge from yeah, inside exactly. instead of just canceling it? Like the electric field won't be zero on its um, inside it and in, and in the cavity, but it will be zero outside, right? Yeah, it's not in, in a lot of, uh, uh, quite a bit of electricity books, um, there's really never a ton of talk about insulators because it's, um, at least at this level, I, I don't remember ever doing anything like that. Let me see, maybe this, this is like a graduate textbook. Um, Yeah, even this book doesn't have it. Or maybe it's uh, like a problem we did yesterday. It was a spherical show, but like it was not participating. So it's just termed an insulator instead of a conductor. And he says, he calls an insulator to confuse us. Okay. Yeah. I... Yeah, I don't think I've ever solved the problem about insulators, now that you mentioned it. Um, so, like, if I read exactly what he mentioned in the email, it says causes law with insulators, all formulas, no sketches sometimes solid, sometimes hollow for each region, a useful area and charge of insulator. No, Q-I-N, yeah, charge of insulator and electric field. And the difficulty would base on if the volume is given or not oh, and the formula is given or not. Um, apparently insulators are often called dielectrics um, and dielectrics are very common. Those are things like um, it's it's like pretty much anything that is you know not a perfect insulator, um, but you know insulates. Is it like a semiconductor? Um, kind of. Or, like or a, maybe in like induced. Like goes in between. Okay. I don't see any uh, homework problem that has discussed this dielectric material. Okay, I'll take a look again.
Yeah, I, I can't imagine this is going to be, um, it's more, more or less, it's really just a, a um, yeah, I, I don't think this would ever be on, on your exam. Um, I can't, I can't figure out what he means by that, um, but this is way too much. Um, I can't think of Gauss's law and, and dialect, like the fact, the fact that Gauss's law changes a little bit with, with dielectrics or, you know, the electric field changes a little bit is, I don't think you've, you've talked about like, you know, the uh, auxiliary uh, electric fields or displacement fields or anything like that. Um, Or I, as long as you know, like the, the, how you use Gauss's law with like, you know, there's a charge enclosed um, and you use the charge enclosed to either integrate um, or, you know, like we said yesterday, you really don't usually integrate. You just use the charge enclosed and you, you know, use the, um, uh, the fact that the charge is usually uniform. Um, and then like we did today where um, uh, Gauss's law tells you that inside the conductor, uh, the electric field is zero. Does that make sense? One minute. Um, I'm going to ask my classmates, maybe they could help me because we all be getting the same pool of questions. Okay. Yeah, and thank you so much. It really yeah, helped absolutely. me a lot. All right. Have a great week. Yeah, you too. I hope it, I hope it goes well. Yeah, thank you. Yeah.